expectation. It's funny because sometimes we pray for God, take this burden from me. We're talking about the financial burden. God, give me the wisdom, Lord. Give me money that I can pay off all my debts. And then the Lord said to you, impresses upon you to stop doing a particular thing, stop going to this particular thing, or stop saving money. And then you're like, well, I like doing that. I like doing this. So I'm not going to stop those things. But the reality doesn't really add anything to your life. It's not a need, it's a want. For example, it's a, I don't know if anyone here plays golf, but if you're a member of a golf club, you know how expensive those things can be. And then here you are saying, that, well, Lord, teach me to be more, give me wisdom that I can be out of my debt. The Lord is saying, yeah, take this out. But you would take us, you want to, we like to do that. Or maybe, and, and this happens to me a lot. Well, I think that, where's my wife? She does. <laughs> happens to me a lot. Because um, I love cars. You know, as a guy, I, I grew up, my dad would take me to car shows. And then, you know, coming here, of course, New York International Car Show every year. Wow, I love it. I love going there. Um, but then, I got into debt because of that. Every other year, I had a new car. This was before, about 10, 10 years ago. Yeah. Every other year, I had a new car. I was leasing and just spending my nest egg on new cars. And then I get the, it's a lease, and then I pump, I make it look nice. So on top of the lease, I'm paying thousands of dollars just to put in a nice sound system, nice wheels, nice whatever, right? But then I'm praying to God, Lord, give me wisdom that I can be out of this. Then again, well, stop doing this. But I wouldn't listen. Until finally I got married, and then every day I had to listen. <laughs> Amen. Because then God is saying, Thou should not have other gods before me. And sometimes these things that we think are nice or good, fun become gods, become idols. I believe that if we pray more for a spiritual wisdom, God will bring it to us. The message of wisdom is through the power of the Holy Spirit. Romans 11, 33 says, Oh, how great are God's riches in wisdom and knowledge. How impossible it is for us to understand His decisions and His ways. The message of wisdom is a proclamation of a declaration of wisdom given to meet the need of some particular occasion or problem. It is not dependent on human ability to na or natural wisdom, but it is a revelation of divine counsel. Through this gift of supernatural insight into both the need into God's word and into God's word, bring in the practical application of that word to the need or problem at hand. Because if it's a message of wisdom, it is clear that only enough is given for the need. This gift does not raise us to a new level of wisdom, nor does it make it impossible for us to make mistakes. It just lets us draw on God's unlimited storehouse. Amen. This is sometimes when, when we're praying, God gives this to us, and it's only for that particular need. Don't add anything to it, don't take anything away from it. Like when last week, when we were praying after service, you know, pastor had this word from the Lord that somebody had a particular ailment. And then I also had this particular impression that somebody was being covered or, or there's this presence in their life that's causing them issues. And, and that's the Lord. Don't add anything to it. Don't try to translate it or manipulate it. Don't try to uh, do anything to it. Just say it the way it is. You may not understand it at that moment, but it is for somebody. And God will use that to break them through whatever they're going through. Sometimes the Lord will bring a message of wisdom to guide the church body. Acts chapter 6, verses 2 to 4. The 12 called the meeting of all the believers. 
is that we apostles should spend our time teaching the word, not running a food program. And those and so brothers select seven men who are well respected and are full of the spirit and wisdom. We will give them this responsibility, then the apostles can spend our time in prayer and teaching the word. In the body of believers, even here in our church, there is wisdom in the counsel of men. Sometimes the Lord will impress to me a particular direction, but I need to make sure that it's in line with God's word. And then I seek the counsel of Pastor Tom, my mentor. Pastor, what do you think of this? I think this is where that word is leading us. Then, of course, he will pray over it, pray over it. This is why sometimes things take so long to happen, right? I'm a Filipino, you know, we like things to happen quickly. Hey, I want to go there, I want to do this, I want to do that. Boom, 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 done. Next thing you know, you're $10,000 in debt, and the thing that you wanted to do didn't really bring anything fruitful. There is wisdom in counsel. We need to seek the counsel of God people. Those who God put ahead of us and top of us. And even our brothers and sisters. We may think we're wise. We have to remember God knows everything. We need to lean on His understanding and not ours. It is also possible that the wisdom fulfills the promises given by Jesus. Jesus was speaking of a supernatural gift of a message of wisdom shown by his command not to meditate or prepare beforehand what they were going to say in the synagogues or before the courts. Luke chapter 21, 13. But this will be your opportunity to tell them about me. Don't worry in advance about how to answer the charges against you, for I will give you the right words in such wisdom that none of your opponents will be able to reply or refute you. This happens to me when you know, preparing for a word, preaching, message, or even a devotional, spend hours preparing that word. But the Lord taught me that, yes, there's good, you have to prepare, you have to study. So you, you give the word that's really good and, and that comes from me, and you know it's from me. But once you stand here, just let the word of God, well, let Him guide you. So when you're speaking to your brothers and sisters, you're trying to encourage them, you're trying to disciple them, you're trying to be a good small group, life group leader, you study the word and then you share it with them. The Lord might impress upon you saying certain things during that time. And it's only for that particular thing. That's the word of wisdom from the Lord. Sometimes, I leave out things in my notes because God told me to. <coughs> it is a word from the Lord. Sometimes I add things, impressions from that I hear from the Lord, and then it's it's what makes it like what makes it real, what makes it true. I remember when you know reading through the book of Acts, they were sent by the Lord and they just shared the word. They didn't have an iPad. They didn't have Google. They just, they didn't have the 100 volume concordances and whatever other books that we have today. They just had the word of God. And they went and preached house to house, shaking up the dust off their feet, leaving the peace of God. Sometimes it's funny because today we're so these things that we have becomes a crutch. But we think we need to always have all these things together before we can share the word of God. But you know what? God will use us to preach his word the way he wants to preach. Sometimes it's a co-worker who has a loved one who's sick, God wants you to share his goodness to that person. Maybe it's a person at the checkout line and they didn't have enough money for that day, 
to pay everything off. And the Lord is impressing upon you to help out that person. You don't know the kind of blessing that does to them. And that by itself is sharing God's word. That by itself is sharing God's love, God's grace. That by itself is a message of wisdom from God. The message of knowledge um, only happens when wisdom is applied. Right application of knowledge. Wisdom is the right application of knowledge. The gift of a message, proclamation, or declaration of knowledge is closely related to the gift of the message of wisdom. Um, I'll jump down to James 3.13. If you are wise and understand God's ways, prove it by living an honorable life, doing good works with the humility that comes from wisdom. And wisdom is who? Jesus. This humility comes from Jesus. The only good works that we can do is through the prompting of the Holy Spirit through Jesus Christ. That's the pure good work that can come out of God. Why am I saying it's pure? Because it is impressed by the Holy Spirit upon you. Sometimes we can think, oh, I want to go do good things. Let's go feed the hungry. And make sure the press is there. Okay. Let's go to the St. Jude's Children's Hospital. Share a good word with your with children. Just make sure the press is there. Oh, I have to have a picture that's not too, you know, I'm doing something, so it's uh, candid, but it's not. So I'm doing something good. Like maybe more Philippines are candid anyway. We have to see what the motivates us to do this good purpose. When it's from God, then it's truly pure. It's good. It's all about Him, not about us. And God will give us the knowledge to do that. It's funny because when I first became a Christian, I wanted to share the word of God. I didn't know how to share the word of God. But the knowledge and wisdom comes from Him anyway. So today, even though we are set in our doctrines, our principles, make sure that that doesn't get in the way of sharing God's word. The brothers and sisters from another denomination are asking you to speak with them, to fellowship with them. And you're like, well, I can't go there because I'm Bhakti Costa. Or I'm this, and that, or the other thing. No. God is using that opportunity for you to go out there and speak the truth in their lives. Take that opportunity. Speak into their lives. The Lord will give you the wisdom and the knowledge that you need at that particular moment. When we go out on Pasek Day and pray for people, I don't know what God is going to do that day. I just know that He will be there on that day. I just know that God will manifest His presence on that day. I just come to expect that God will manifest His supernatural power, healing, deliverance on that day. And in fact, He does. Year after year after year. Because God is true yesterday, today, and forever. His word does not return void. So, brothers and sisters, if you've seen it happen in the past, why is it that you can't believe him today? Why is it you can't believe him for tomorrow? When God impresses something in your heart, and you know it's from the power of the Holy Spirit, receive it and speak it. True wisdom only comes from God. So we move on to the Holy Spirit. He can also speak to us in page 13. Speaks through us through dreams and visions. Dreams and visions weren't just an Old Testament phenomenon. We know that Peter fell into a trance. Acts chapter 10, verses 10 to 12. Now there was a believer in Damascus named Ananias. The Lord spoke to him in a vision, calling Ananias. Yes, Lord, he replied. The Lord said, go over to Straight Street to the house of Judas, where you get there. When you get there, ask for a man from Tarsus named Saul. He is praying to me right now. I have shown him a vision of a man named Ananias coming in, laying hands on him so he can see again. Dreams are different from visions. Visions, so you're awake and you see it. Dreams is what you receive when you're sleeping. All 
right? 